The best way to quickly summarize my project and give an idea of what it is about is by the title. The title of my project is Forecasting Emerging Industry ETF Time Series using ARIMA, ANN and hybrid models. To give a brief overview of the project, I will go through all of the concepts mentioned in the title and explain them in more detail. Emerging industries are defined as a group of companies in a line of business formed around a new product or idea that is in the early stages of development. A couple of examples would be artificial intelligence, biotechnology, 5G networks and many more. The reason for choosing emerging industries in particular is because they are highly disruptive and can be very profitable for investors. ETFs, to put it simply, are a collection of stocks. ETFs were selected instead of individual stocks due to their less erratic nature, which will help with overall forecasting accuracy. What is time series forecasting? A time series can be described as a sequence of observations taken sequentially in time. Therefore, time series forecasting is the process of fitting models on historical data and using them to predict future observations. Many statistical and neural network based models are widely used in forecasting. The statistical model that is used for this project is called ARIMA. ARIMA stands for Other Regressive Integrated Moving Average. The ARIMA models are quite simplistic, which means that they are also accessible and quite robust but can often be more efficient than complex structural models in forecasting. ARIMA models are also well known for their notable forecasting accuracy and flexibility in representing several different types of time series. ANN is short for Artificial Neural Networks. An artificial neural network is a computing system designed to simulate the way the human brain analyzes and processes information. ANNs are data-driven and able to learn from examples to capture subtle functional relationships among the data, even if the underlying relationships are unknown or hard to describe. This makes them very attractive for a forecasting task. The type of ANN used for this project is a multi-layer perceptron, which is a feed-forward ANN consisting of at least three layers of nodes, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. It is one of the most widely implemented neural network topologies and can provide better results than some more complicated ANN models in some circumstances. The ARIMA and ANN models will also be combined into a hybrid model. The motivation for building a hybrid model comes from the following different perspectives outlined by many researchers. First, it can often be difficult to determine whether a time series is generated from a linear or a nonlinear underlying process. Second, real world time series are rarely pure linear or nonlinear, hence, a combination of models can offer better results. And third, majority of researchers agree that no single forecasting method is best in every situation. Therefore, combining different models can increase the chance to capture different patterns in the data improve forecasting performance and make the models more reliable. So to recap, the overall objective of this project is to compare the effectiveness of ARIMA, ANN and hybrid models in a financial time series forecasting task. The programming language chosen for the project is Python as it is very versatile and easy to use. Jupyter Notebook documents will be used for development and libraries such as sklearn, matplotlib, pandas, numpy, pmd rima, tensorflow and keras will be used in the project. The project will be deemed successful if the rima, ann and hybrid models are adequately usable and perform well enough to offer some useful insight. Metrics such as mean squared error and mean absolute error will be used to evaluate model results. As a preamble, the structure of the project demonstration will be briefly explained. 
the project will be demonstrated on one of the three ETF datasets due to time constraints. The dataset used for demonstration will be ARCQ. The results of the other two datasets will also be shown at the end of the demonstration for the sake of completeness, but no commentary will be offered. The demonstration will be divided into three major sections, the ARIMA, MLP and hybrid model. In addition, Jupyter Notebook provides an innate structure to its notebooks with its sequence of different cells. All of the relevant cells and their resulting output will be explained and analyzed. The code of some of the more important functions will also be shown and explained. Finally, the results of the demonstration will be compared to the results claimed in the project document to prove the consistency of the system. The file structure of the project is divided into three folders marked in red and one Jupyter notebook marked in yellow. The data folder holds all of the ETF price data in a CVS file format. The models folder has four Python files with necessary functions. This was done to reduce complexity and Im improve readability for the end user. Some of the more important plots are saved into the reports fo folder. However, it is recommended to save the whole notebook as a HTML file. The environment and requirements files hold the project dependencies so the system could be easily replicated. At the start of the Jupyter Notebook, a few magic commands are run to automatically reload changes in other modules, such as the Python files in the models folder. Next, all of the necessary libraries are imported. This line of code could be considered the entry point to the notebook. After running the cell, a data frame with the values from the CVS file is created. The next cell will create a plot of the ETF price movement. This cell will find the number of lags above 0.9 autocorrelation, which will also be used as the input dimension for the models. The data will be divided into training and testing sets, with the test set being 10%. The first 9 values will be omitted to avoid not, not the number of values. The data will not be shuffled due to it being time series data with dependencies between observations. The auto ARIMA function will be run to optimize the ARIMA hyperparameters. Diagnostic plots to analyze the validity of the optimization will also be output. The models tried by the function can be seen marked in red. Using the optimized hyperparameters, an ARIMA forecast will be run on the data. Finally, the error measures for the ARIMA forecast will be calculated. ARIMA provides an adequate forecast for our key dataset as the trend is accurate and the real values stay within the confidence interval. To be able to forecast time series values using an MLP, the time series would need to be turned into a supervised learning problem. This means that the time series would need to be divided into numerous examples that the model can learn to generalize from. The number of lags, which is 9 for the RQ dataset, 
is used to make the supervised learning time series. The data is then divided into training, validation and testing sets. 10% of the data set will be left for testing and 10% for validation. The data is normalized between 0 and 1 to speed up the training process. Next, a baseline model will be built and the prediction will be run for 10 iterations. This is done to get baseline error measures to determine the usefulness of the hyperparameter optimization. The MLP model will be wrapped into a sklearn regressor object and the grid of hyperparameters will be tested using randomized search CV. The results of the optimization will be used to build the MLP model and forecast the ETF dataset. An early stopping function has been added to reduce overfitting and improve model generalization. Next, the model forecasting results will be plotted against the real values and the error measures will be calculated. A plot showing the structure of the model will also be shown. To build the hybrid model, it is necessary to have residual values from the ARIMA model. To achieve this, 50% of the dataset will be used to train an ARIMA model, and an out-of-sample ARIMA forecast will be made for the remaining 50% of the dataset. The residuals will be calculated by subtracting the ARIMA forecast from the real values. The number of lags will be recalculated as the structure of the residual data is different to the dataset used for the MLP model. The data is once again then divided into training, validation and testing sets. As only 50% of the whole dataset was able to be used for the residuals, 20% of the data will be left for testing to equal the size of the previous test sets. 10% of the data will once again be left for validation. Next, the sets of residual data will be fed into an MLP model used to forecast future residual values. The forecast will be centered around zero as the model does not forecast starting from zero. The zero centered residuals and the RIMA forecast from section one of the demonstration will then be combined into a hybrid forecast by adding them together. Finally, a comparison graph with the hybrid results plotted against the real values is drawn and the error measures are calculated.
Oh, oh, oh.